In this video, APC Senior Product Designer Lucas Reyes will demonstrate the new Constrained Model ID feature in APC Builder V87. This is what we like to call keeping it real. It's now easier than ever to set the structure of APC models and to impose real-world constraints on the optimal solution space. There are several different reasons why you would want to use constraints in the identification. You might have mass balances you want to preserve. You might have collinear CVs that you want the identification to know about. You might also have zero curves or known gains, and you want to get rid of non-causal relationships. Previously, you would have to perform the calculations elsewhere and then manipulate your model accordingly. We have made a more consistent, unified workflow. The constraints you input will be carried up to the master model. This information is preserved for future engineers who might work on the same model. This simulation will show you how we can do that. Let's review the constraint ID features in APC Builder V87. So I'm using here the fractionary example, just simple 4MVs, 1 feet 4 and 3 TVs. In APC Builder, we access the case editor. Notice that we have a constraint tab in this level. Let's jump into the case where I have all the MVs and TVs, including the feed forward. I will show you how to add three different types of constraints that we have. First thing I'm going to do is I will add the gain constraint type of zero gain. Let's zoom in on this curve, which is the relationship between the FIC 2001 and FIC 2100. I have the TFD to help us, which is the reflux flow, the set point against the fuel gas. It is very small, and that's right. There should be no relationship here. So what we can do, we can select this curve and click on the zero. Let's say a gain constraint of zero has been added to the select curve, click OK. And I'm going to do that for all of the curves that I see that are very small. So just to give you an idea how this works, select them. And this last one over here. So if I go to the constraint tab, I see that all the zero gains that I select the curve and click on there, they were added here. Optionally, you could enter those zero gain constraints here using this UI. And I click on identify again. Going back to the model and we see that the gains are zero now for those that we checked. Let's move to the next example, which is the mass balance. This is the relationship between the feed temperature and the top and bottom flow. We have a gain of 0.758 against the feed temperature and the top product flow, and minus 0.831. From the process point of view, increasing the feed temperature must not generate mass in the system, right? Therefore, the sum of those two gains must be zero. And this is what we are going to add here. We are going to the constraint tab, the general con gain constraint. I click on add. And the way this dialog works is I will add a multiplier of one. One multiplied by the gain. And one multiplied by the gain for the FIC 2102. And if I click OK, I have the option to set the sum to zero. Click on validate, this is feasible, and I run the identify again, and it is there. They have the same gains, and we are consistent with the model in terms of mass balance. As the last part, gain constraint type, I have the gain ratios, the top reflux FIC 2001 and the mid reflux FIC 2004 they have similar effects on these controlled variables. As you can see here, this gain is minus 0.316, this is minus 0.301, and this is 0.212 and 0.229. This is a slightly different, but we will go ahead and set that they have the same gain ratio. Select here, the first three numerator, select the need reflux as the denominator, and we set this value to one. Click on validate, okay, and run the identify. 
now we have the same gains for the top reflux and the mid reflux. Means that the controller is not trying to move more the top reflux and then, then the mid reflux and then try to control those three CVs independently. They will be moving those two MVs together. At this point, we we have all the constraints set and then we can go ahead and send it to the master. And then we say that we'll transfer all the constraints to the master model. All constraints that we work in the case level are now in the master model. And if you click on the report, we see that the current model that we have is not consistent. So we see a bad value here. So they are not matching the constraints that we work. At the next step would be then to update. So we go ahead and run the update. And our assembled model is now consistent in terms of constraints. So this is really important because when you deploy this application, you put this application online, for example, after one year, this information will be available there. So someone will look at it and then you understand why and all the cases and the structure is preserved. These are just three examples of how you can use constraints in the model identification. The new constrained model ID feature allows you to build more accurate models for maximum optimization. See for yourself now in Aspen DMC3 V87. For more information, please visit www.aspentech.com.